Chapter 4 Blackbeard's True Love The men on Captain Pike's ship were very different from the British sailors of the Queen Anne. They played cards all night, and if they lost, they fought with each other. They were only sailing to the Bermuda Triangle to find Blackbeard's treasure and steal anything else they could. Their ship looked like the Queen Anne, except for the flag flying above the sails. It was black, with a white skull and crossbones on it. This was the mark of the pirates. Some of the men were about to throw a man into the sea for cheating at cards when Captain Pike stopped them. What's going on here? Are you trying to kill each other before we find the gold? This one was trying to cheat us at cards. We can't have that, can we? That we can't, my friend. But we're waiting for a treasure much bigger than the one you play cards for. Put him in the stocks for a day and let him think about things there. The stocks were two pieces of wood with three round holes in them. The men placed the prisoner's head and hands in the holes. Then they lowered the top and they locked him inside. He had to stand up the whole time. Captain Pike was standing next to his first mate, Santiago, at the wheel of the ship. Santiago asked him about the danger of finding Blackbeard's treasure. They see no one can take Blackbeard's treasure. Why do you think you can? I think that Blackbeard and I are the same kind of pirate. He wanted everything, and he knew how to get it. When I see that treasure, when I put my hands on it, there is nothing that can make me lose it. There was a pirate in a small seat above the sails, looking at the ocean through a telescope. This was called the Crow's Nest, and he was the first to see Blackbeard's ship sailing ahead of them. He whistled to the men below. Ship! Strike ahead! Captain Pike put a telescope up to his eye. He saw Blackbeard's empty ship, then yelled to the man who was steering. Go straight for it! This is what we're looking for! Captain Pike and some of his men went aboard the empty ship, but they couldn't find any treasure. Santiago thought they made a mistake. Maybe this isn't a Blackbeard's ship. It could be a ship lost at sea. There's only one way to find out. Captain Pike went below to Blackbeard's cabin, and Santiago followed him. It was dark, and the captain had to light a candle. He walked with the candle to one of the cabin walls where there was a round old picture of a woman. She was a beautiful dark woman with large dark round eyes. Her black hair was tied at the back of her head, and she had a gold necklace with a round green stone around her neck. Who is it, Captain? It's a woman who was once the queen of one of these islands. They say Blackbeard was in love with her. They say she was the reason for his death. He came here to marry her and give her all the jewels he had. No one ever saw him again. And no one's ever found the treasure. This must be his ship. They went upstairs and Captain Pike told his men to begin taking up the boards on deck to see if the treasure was hidden and where. While the men were doing this, Pike saw a clear rectangular spot left by the chest after Captain Scott took it. The whole deck was grey and dirty, except for this one spot where the chest was for so many years. Stop! The men stopped searching and looked at Captain Pike. He raised his hand in the air and looked at the clean spot on the deck. Someone has been here before us! Chapter 5 The Wrong Chest The Queen Anne sailed for a few more days, but it couldn't find the Bermuda Triangle. The men were getting angry. Captain Scott heard more and more talk about the treasure, so he decided to call the men and speak to them. I know that a lot of you want to see these islands. I want you to know that you will be handsomely paid for this long voyage. Wait a little longer, and you will be rewarded. Blackbeard's ghost was walking behind the men as the captain talked. Smith, the man who stole some of Blackbeard's treasure, was standing in the front where Captain Scott could see him. 
He still had the jewels in his pocket, and Blackbeard knew this. Because no one could see him, he put his hand in Smith's pocket and threw the jewels on the deck in front of Smith. The others thought Smith dropped something, but when they saw the beautiful diamonds and the gold necklace, they looked at Smith to see what he would say. Captain, I don't know how they got there. It was him that put them there. He pointed at a man. He was the man who had helped him carry the chest aboard. You're a liar! They began to fight, and the other men joined in. Some of them wanted to stop the fight, but others tried to take the jewels from the deck. The captain quickly took the jewels before anyone else could. The men didn't stop fighting with each other until they heard the man in the crow's nest shout. Ship! They looked and saw the black flag above the sails of a ship coming towards them, but they didn't know it was Captain Pike. Captain Scott looked through his telescope, then called to the men. Enemy ship approaching. Open the cannons. Prepare to fight. The men were running to different parts of the ship when Captain Pike's ship fired a cannon. A loud boom was heard, but the cannonball missed and landed in the water, making a big splash next to the Queen Anne. Another cannon was fired. This one hit one of the Queen Anne's sails. The Queen Anne fired back and the battle began. It was a fierce battle. The sails on both ships had holes in them and were on fire and there was black smoke in the air. When the ships were close enough, the pirates used ropes to jump onto the Queen Anne. All the men were fighting with swords, so there was no one to watch the treasure. Captain Pike jumped on board the Queen Anne. He went below with two of his men where Blackbeard's treasure was. Captain Scott saw them below and followed with his sword in his hand. Captain Pike turned to fight him. I know you've got that treasure, and I'm not leaving without it. You will die before you touch a piece of what's behind that door. Blackbeard was watching all of this. He followed Captain Pike downstairs, and when he had the chance, he hit him over the head with a piece of wood. Captain Pike was surprised. He didn't know what happened. Quick, open that door, now! Pike's men broke the door open, and Captain Pike opened both chests. He left the Queen's gold pieces and put his hands on the shining jewels of Blackbeard's treasure. Look at these beauties. I've never seen such colors. Blue diamonds, pearls, red rubies. Blackbeard closed the top down on Captain Pike's hands and he screamed in pain. Good God, open it, open it. His men helped open the chest, but both Pike's hands were badly hurt. Take that one with us. We'll come back for the other later. Captain Pike was looking at his injured hands His men were very surprised at what happened, so they picked up the wrong chest. It was the chest with the Queen's gold in it. Blackbeard was smiling at Captain Pike, knowing that no one would get his gold. He didn't know himself that they were leaving his treasure behind, so he sat on the chest that the men took back to the pirate ship. Chapter 6 Rum Island. The Queen Anne was badly damaged, and many of its men were hurt. The captain was in his bed with a white bandage on his head. His first mate, Mr. Stewart, came to see him. Captain, the men have found the door to the treasure broken open. It seems Pike and his men took the Queen's gold, but left behind the treasure we found on that ship. How is the ship? And the men? Many men are hurt, sir. Our sails are badly damaged. We are now sailing to an island we've seen about two miles away. Mr. Stewart, have someone watch that treasure. It's all we have left. The Queen Anne moved very slowly with all of its sails pulled down. The men were sitting or standing quietly along the deck as the ship anchored, a half mile from the beach. They were tired and hurt from the fight with the pirates. The sun was shining and the island looked beautiful, but the men were not interested. 
the captain came up on deck and began ordering the men. Lower the boats! I'm going to the island to see if we can get something to fix these sails. I want to take that treasure with us. We don't know what we'll have to give them. The island had a long beach of white sand with tall green coconut trees on it. They pulled their boats up onto the sand. As they were deciding which way to go, they saw a native boy jump from a tree and run away. The captain spoke first. Let's follow him. He may lead us to his people. The boy led the men through the green hills of the island. He stayed far ahead of them, but stopped whenever he wanted them to see him and follow. There were tall green plants on the hills, and the air smelled of vanilla. What's that smell? It smells like rum. It is, and these are the sugar plants they use to make it. They break the plants apart and mix the rum in large barrels. It smells as if they're making sweets. It'll be nice if we get to taste it. <laughs> the men laughed as they walked on. When they came to the top of a hill looking down onto a village, they saw natives working near small houses made from trees and leaves. The small boy they were following ran into the village before them, and everyone began looking up at Captain Scott and his men. They stopped what they were doing and waited for the sailors. A tall, dark and very beautiful woman in a white headdress was standing in front of the natives, waiting for Captain Scott. She had large, dark eyes, and she wore a gold necklace with a green stone, just like the one in the picture on Blackbeard's ship. Her name was Queen Aliana, and she was the queen of Rum Island. The sailors put Blackbeard's treasure down behind Captain Scott when he went to meet the queen. I am Captain Scott of the Queen Anne from England. We've come here to trade our gold for anything you may have to offer, but we also have a problem. Our ship is badly damaged. We need to fix our sails. Welcome, Captain. I am Queen Aliana, and this is Rum Island. Come and sit with us and show us what you have brought. The sailors sat in a circle around the treasure chest. Captain Scott sat next to Queen Aliana, and all the men were offered a cup of the island's rum. When Captain Scott opened the chest and showed the Queen the shining treasure of jewels and gold, her eyes widened and she stood up. Where did you get that? It's not really ours. It's something we found on an empty ship at sea. Our gold... Take it away! We do not want it here. It is cursed. The man who owns it must have it back. You must take it back to where you found it. The Queen waved her hand. All of the natives left and went inside their houses, leaving Captain Scott and his men alone. <laughs>